Hi everybody, it's Sarah Curry with Let's Make Art and we do watercolor tutorials, a new one every single week. And this week we have a bonus. Ooh, bonus. Maybe you do like, ba 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 confetti, <laughs> popping out. <laughs> okay, so this week we're doing a sloth. Oh, wow. Which is one of my favorite animals. Michael here, who is my husband, he's going to be working the cameras, telling me where to look. He'll also be telling me sloth facts throughout the tutorial. Oh. He doesn't know that. I just told him right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you might hear some baby noises. That is my son Arlo hanging out with us because we're all still in quarantine and that's what we got to do. Yep. Um, I'm also wearing my sloth apron. Love and I'm it. so bummed because somebody sent me a sloth bracelet and I took it off to take a shower this morning and I forgot to put it back on. But I have a sloth bracelet. It's amazing. Um, okay, let's actually talk about painting. Um, this is our reference photo. I just want to say that this is a kind of surprise bonus tutorial. So this was printed off my home printer, which is why it does not look as good as your reference cards that will come in the kit. Sorry about that, but I figured let's just get this done. So we're going to do this sloth in six steps. So the very first step, we are going to do the body of the sloth. The second step, we are going to paint the face. Third step, we're going to do the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Fourth step, we're going to start putting in our leaves. Fifth step, we're going to blend out our leaves. And the sixth step is uh, finishing details, probably mostly going back into that face and just um, tidying up the eyes and the nose. And I would like to say that um, the eyes and the nose are very, very tiny on this painting. They're very small. So if you can't get the amount of detail that I'm trying to get, that's okay. Sweet. So, let's begin with our colors. The paintbrushes I'm using are around six and around two. Um, I've named them Kenan and Brock. You can name them whatever you want, or you can just not name your paintbrushes. That's a normal thing, so it's fine. Sarah, trivia. Yeah. What kind of sloth is that? I don't know. That is a three-toed sloth. Three-toed sloth? Yeah, there are two main types of sloths, two-toed and three-toed. Okay. Two toed are like a little bit redder. They don't have as distinctive uh, patterns on their faces. You've seen them. Oh, yes. They're I have cute. seen them. I actually know what you're talking about. But I think most of the uh, fanfare, like the apron and like the sloth print stuff, is mostly of three toed sloth. Three toed sloth. Yeah, this one definitely has the face markings. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that fact, Michael. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do four colors today. So our colors are black and emerald green and sepia or sepia you can actually pronounce it both ways what about shepia <laughs> that one i don't think so no, can't go with that one. <laughs> and then the last one is honey brown so we have kind of a reddish brown and a gold brown Okay, we are going to do our outline, do our oath, do the warm-ups, and then start painting. So, if you buy this kit, you can get this outline, um, or you can find it on our website for free. Just go to letsmakeart.com, click on Learn With Us, click on Resources, and then click on Digital Downloads, and you'll be able to see all of our outlines for free for you to get. Okay, I'm gonna use graphite paper to transfer this, which should also be included in your kit. I'm gonna tape my outline to my paper and do dark shiny side down. And then I'm gonna use a pen to trace. Um, it's super helpful if you use a colored pen or pencil because then you can see where what lines you've already traced. Girl, if you trace the graphite paper the wrong way, it won't work at all? It will not work at all. That's a bummer. And I have done that. I can't tell you how many times I've put the graphite paper in upside down or just forgot to put in the graphite paper and I trace the entire thing and I lift it up and my paper is blank. If you like rest your hand on it, will it make a big hand print? If you press really hard, like I'm going to press really hard. Don't do it. No, don't do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you guys. I'll do it in a place that I know I'm going to paint over though. Okay. Right in the middle of his face. So, can you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, wherever you're touching, it's transferring, Dang. which is why graphite paper is better the older it gets because it's not as sensitive. 
So if you have graphite paper from a few kits or a few months, use your oldest one first and keep just using that one over and over again so you can get that, um, that all that extra rubbed off so it doesn't. Graphite paper comes out of the gate as a very volatile teenager. And then it matures and becomes less sensitive. That's right. <laughs> that could be true for like children. It, it comes out needy. Little needs a little extra attention. And husbands. <laughs> Quarantine husbands are especially needy. I'm like Sarah, Sarah, feed me. <laughs> Make me food. Make me food. Actually, he's pretending to be me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's me. <laughs> okay. So I like to check things as I go, and I'm I've been trying to press really light here so my lines are not super dark because watercolor is transparent. So you'll be able to see the lines through this, but. If I do my lines too light, you guys can't see what I'm doing on camera. So I'm actually going to switch to a pen um, because I'm, it's going to be a harder line and then a darker line so you guys can actually see on the tutorial. There was a felt tip marker over there on the floor. Do you want to use that or is that still too soft? The felt tip marker is great if you're at home too soft for me. Because you're hard. Because <laughs> I'm hardcore. super hard. No, cause, just because I want you guys to see the lines. And we're getting into like the nose detail part, which if you guys get kind of lost on the lines, that's okay. Don't stress about it because there are a lot of little lines. Okay, and I'm going over some previous trace lines because they were too light. I, whenever I see projects like this, like, I want you to especially, but I want the viewer to like put things in this lost hand. Oh, that would be cute. Also, I just want to say like the leaves are really free in this project as in like, you guys can change out this background. You can do more leaves. You can do all this stuff. I've been working on doing more backgrounds for you guys because I know that some of you are interested in that. So I have been trying. Okay. I think that's probably good. Yeah. Did you get all of his inside hair? Like his chest hair? Oh, not here. Good call. And down here. Okay, I think that's good. I brought value for the day. <laughs> You're doing great. So, now we're going back and we're gonna do our oath. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. Sorry, I have a Pringle in my mouth. <laughs> I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. Good I job. Know, I remember. <laughs> Value times two. Value times two. Okay, so we're going to go over three warm-ups today. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is the direction of our brush stroke. So if you look at our sloth here, Okay, so you can see looking on the reference photo here that the brush strokes are curved. They're not straight up and down and they're not straight side to side. And that's because I want you guys to focus on forming this animal as you're painting it. Because you can see here there's actually not a lot of detail. It's, it's like a single wash and then a little bit darker values on top. But how we communicate form is the direction of our brush stroke. If we didn't do that, and if we just went straight up and down, then it would be less clear of what is actually going on even in this painting. So, I want you to take a round six, and even, actually, it might be good to do it on the outline here. So if I'm gonna grab some paint, it doesn't matter what color, it could be anything. And then I just want you to kind of like follow the shape of the belly here. So it's kind of rounded. And then I like to lift my brush up as I go out, so then it goes to a point. So here I'm pressing down and then I lift my brush. And if you need to exaggerate this movement to help you, it's kind of like a little whip, 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 kind of like that, to kind of help that rounded. And so I want you to like kind of go through, and because it's rounded, this side, it's gonna be doing it the opposite way. 
You know when you're like out and about or watching TV or anything and you see someone and you're like, oh, I feel like I look like that person? Yeah. I feel like I'm starting to look like this sloth during quarantine, like the roundness of the <laughs> chest and the belly. <laughs> You're looking at this form like, and then you're feeling your body and you're like, wait a second well, here. Well, I'm feeling my tummy with my hands as you're painting around the curves and I'm like, I have the same <laughs> thing. Okay, so when you do the round of the body, so the body is nice and round. The arm is also round. So this this arm, I, I if I do brush strokes like this, you're like, uh, okay, that looks flat. If you do your brush strokes rounded, we're kind of hinting at the form that this has. And you're like, okay, so this is round, so it's three-dimensional. So that's just what I wanted to point out to you guys because the body is very loose. We don't have a lot of detail. And actually, I've painted a few sloths before, and they're difficult to paint because of how little um, like detail and structure there is to their body like they have a body but it's covered in these long like wiry hairs that makes it look smooth and they're just kind of like yep wait one more there they are just, they, so really we just want to make sure that the face is where we're paying attention to the markings because that will then really set off what we're painting okay the second thing that i want to talk about is tiny details and so i want you to grab your round two, which is Brock. And I want you to practice getting thin marks um, because when we're doing the eyes and the nose and the face, we're gonna have to get really small and tight in there. So I have my round two. And when you get your round two wet, if there's too much water and paint on your brush, then your tip is not gonna be as fine. Okay, so what I like to do is I get my round too wet, I hit it off the side of the cup so it's just damp, I pick up a little bit of paint, and then I like to sandwich my paintbrush. So I press it down on one side, and then I press it down on the other side so it kind of like pushes the bristles together. So then I have the thinnest, can they see that on the side cam? Uh -huh. they have, I can get the thinnest line. And then like kind of, let's practice little tiny eyes here. So I just want you to practice doing little marks with the tip of your paintbrush. See how small you can go. Speaking of Brock, you and Molly are uh, having a baby today. Yeah. Hey Brock, if you're watching this, good luck, buddy. Good Molly, luck. I guess, good luck, Brock and Molly. I guess Molly, you're the, yeah. <laughs> you're the one. Good luck, Molly. Good luck. We're thinking about you. Excited to meet baby girl. Name her Michelle, in my honor. Or Sarah. Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> okay, and uh, I just want to point out one more time. So this is me dipping my paintbrush in my paint, picking up paint, and just trying to do a thin line. So you see the difference there? So sometimes having too much water or too much paint will just thicken the, the bristles itself. So kind of sandwich it. But remember, don't compare your work because I try these things that you do and my lines still aren't as pretty as yours. So yeah. don't compare your work. Don't compare and give yourself a little bit of grace because we are all in different stages and I've been doing this a very long time and I've been using these paintbrushes a very long time. So I At least two or three weeks. At least. So I figured out how to use them. But I'm trying to give all of those hints to you so then you don't have to figure it all out yourself. Okay, and the very last thing that I want to talk about is just values. Values is the lightness and darkness of a color. It doesn't have anything to do with the color itself. Um, to get a lighter value in watercolor, all you have to do is add more water. So if I grab my paintbrush, grab a color, there's a dark value. I dip my paintbrush in my water, hit it off the side of my cup, lighter value. And you can just keep on going. Okay. You guys can practice that a little bit more if you want. Um, one thing that I, you'll see me do that I like to do is this same thing, except I do it not with spaces. So I like to put my dark value down first and then immediately just grab water and blend out. So you'll see me do this technique on the sloth. That's how I do like the arm and the body. I like that because it creates a transition, a value change quite easily and because we're doing it so quick, it's smooth. Where 
um, if sometimes if you layer, like do your lightest value first and then your medium and your dark, which is really traditional with watercolor, I've noticed that um, I tend to get hard edges a little bit more. That's probably because of the paper that I'm using and the paint that I'm using, but this is the paper and paint that we're using, so let's work to our strengths. Okay, now I think we are ready to paint. So here's the outline. I'm gonna start with my round six, which is my Keenan paintbrush. I am going to get a little bit of black and the sepia, and maybe a little bit of the honey. Kind of mix that all together. So we're doing step one, we're gonna start with the body. So I'm gonna start just kind of down here. There's a shadow on this. And then I just rinse my brush and use water to blend out. While you're blending, more sloth facts. Okay. About 10,000 years ago, a species of sloth went extinct. It was the size of an Asian elephant. What? It was called Megatherium, and it had little bone discs like plate armor all over it. Wait. Elephant-sized sloth. You heard that right. Okay, how big is a... Is a was it Asian elephant? Asian elephants are big. They're like eight feet tall. Are you serious? Yeah, they're giant sloths. A normal sloth now is like the size of a medium dog. Yeah. Imagine an elephant-sized sloth. I... There was not enough... According to, you know, this site, who knows, but uh, there was not enough food to keep them fed, so they died off. Aw. Were they as slow, do you think? Probably. <laughs> Except they were like a battle sloth, they had armor on They were like the slowest, most intimidating creature ever. That one I feel like I wouldn't be as scared of because it's like... Imagine riding it. If I, I know, and then if you like ran away, it probably wouldn't be able to get you. Get you. Yeah. <laughs> also, they don't eat meat. They just eat like aphids. No, but okay, this is getting really tangential. You paint while we're talking. I think that some uh, plant-eating animals will eat meat occasionally if they're lacking of like nutrients. If they're like, okay. So I don't think that it was like a bloodthirsty giant sloth, but you Maybe. know, you might snack on a Sarah if you needed some <laughs> protein or calcium, I don't know. Okay, so now I'm getting to the shadow of the arm here. So again, and I kind of like, we talked about brush strokes and I put in the shadows or the shading, like the direction that you, I want you guys to kind of pay attention to. Really? When it comes to doing loose painting like this, the key to it is quick and um, kind of like go at it with an attitude of like, I don't care about you. You know what I mean? Like nonchalant, like don't baby it. If you baby it too much, it will start, start to get overworked and you'll start to get frustrated. So you kind of have to just be like, you're a piece of paper. And Play hard to get. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even into you. I'm not even that into you. I'm not invested into this painting. <laughs> <laughs> but secretly, but you totally secretly, are. you're like totally are, and you're like, please come out really good because I want to gift you to someone or something. <laughs> I really have to play mind games like that. Is that silly? <laughs> so I'm going to start on the bottom here again, doing my dark value first, rounding it out, and then working fairly quickly, just grabbing my paintbrush and blending. Now, if you blend out your dark values when you're blending this out, that happens. You can just do another layer on top. I'm sure that is what I will do. If it's looking too red, you can grab a little bit of your emerald green and mix that in there, and that will tone down your red. Because red and green are complementary colors. It also serves to show the algae that grows on sloth's bodies. Yes! Okay, I heard this thing one time which is a huge reason why, like the sole reason why I decided that sloths are my favorite animals. And I don't even know if it's accurate. I, I can't even think now where I've heard this. So maybe I'm just making this up. But <laughs> I heard that sloths turn green um, because of like the algae and the aphids that crawl onto their body while they're just laying there and they eat aphids. So like all they have to do is just like hang out. And then their fruit food crawls onto them, and then they just like eat. <laughs> and I just, I just want to live in that world where it's like, I'm gonna just sit here and paint, and then all of the food is just gonna like present itself to me. I mean, I've been trying. 
I can only do so much. <laughs> oh I just see you slaving in the kitchen like a house elf. You're like, I'm trying. Dolly, bring food, sir. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna do the legs again. It's just like simple wash. You can kind of paint over your leaves. Also, when it comes to backgrounds, I decided to do this background at the end of my painting, but traditionally, you usually wanna do your backgrounds first because if you layer on top like this, um, when you're painting, then the edges will be true to what you would see in real life. Does that make sense? It would actually like work its way up where, um, sorry, I just noticed a paint drop that I'm blending out. Um, sometimes if you, I guess it just depends, whatever part you want on top, that is the part that you would paint last. Okay. Layering. Layering, that's right, so I'm gonna do the background. The reason why I didn't paint the background first is because I didn't decide to do a background until after I painted the sloth. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll just teach you with the background first, but then that wouldn't match the step-by-step -step sheet. I'm just showing you guys my mental processes I'm creating here. I'm trying to make it as easy for you as I can. Okay, so there's the back arm. This side and this side is gonna be a little bit darker value because it's turning away and it's a three-dimensional form. And then there's a little bit of shading here on the head. Okay, so that's step one, that's the body. Um, because we're blending our colors here, different colors are gonna pop out. You can see in my reference photo here that we have like a red pink popping out from the brown. Uh, here I have some green popping through. That is fine and normal and I think actually kind of cool. And I just wanna say that while you're painting it, it's gonna seem really obvious, but when you're done, colors like that, if somebody else looked at this painting, they wouldn't be like, why is there a green splotch in the belly? Like. It makes sense with the painting, so just kind of like breathe and don't get too mad at your painting or your paints for doing kind of what they're supposed to do. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the face. I'm gonna mix a little bit more black in here because the edge of the head is a dark brown and I want it to be darker than the arm that's behind it or else they'll kind of like blend in together but I don't want it pure black, so it's just gonna be a dark brown here. And then up on this side. Okay. And then we're gonna kinda, I'm gonna grab like less brown to get a lighter brown to do this part. It's okay if these edges blend a little bit. And I'm gonna be avoiding the eye sockets and eyes. And it's always a good idea if you're not sure what's going on like where your lines are or what part is supposed to be light or dark. It's always a good idea to start out with light, like anyway, and then as you go, you can always add layers to darken it. So I just kind of did like a soft wash over all the things. And then now I can kind of pay attention to, okay, what parts are darker? So it looks like the part, so if this is my mouth here, Oh, it looks like I forgot another line. It looks like he has 50 chins. <laughs> that is accurate. Not like, like me. Can't get all my chins. That's, oh, yep. The pinnacle of beauty. <laughs> Maybe this is why I love sloth so much. Our multiple chins. Okay. So then down here, I'm going to be doing a darker value. kind of underneath the chin area. Mm -hmm. 
And then if my wash is pretty, I'm gonna wait a second. I wanna do the eye sockets now, but if my wash is too wet around it, I don't wanna put those in yet because this is like the most distinctive marks on the sloth is the dark things that go, like the mask. So you don't want that to blend out too much or else then you'll lose it and then you won't, you might not be able to tell what animal this is. So I'm gonna like move away from this for a second and do something else. So um, on the mouth, so this part of the mouth is actually shadowed right here, like underneath the nose. Can you guys see that? So I'm gonna grab some black. I don't wanna make it too dark. So I'm just gonna grab like a gray and do like a gray there. And I'm just gonna drop in a little bit more color onto this. Just needed, just needed some brightness. Now if you drop in color like this yellow and the yellow is too bright that it's like taking over everything else, you can do another wash on top of it to tone it down. And at this point, your sloth is going to look funky. Don't give up on it. Animals always, always, always look super weird until you're like totally done with them. So let your painting have a chance before you give up on it. I'm going to do another layer of brush strokes on this body. So I'm just going to kind of go through. Here, it kind of... Again, these are just kind of loose gestural. What is the shape of this form that we're painting? And let's just give our viewer enough information that they can kind of tell what's going on, but it doesn't have to be perfectly rendered. Just hints at like form and things like that. Also, outlines are totally, totally, totally a guide for you. They're, it's not a coloring book. It doesn't need to be blocky. If you go outside the lines, not a big deal at all. Don't get mad at yourself. And the wonderful thing about watercolor, if you do like, let's say you do one of these gestural brush strokes, you don't like it, you can soften it or mess it up a little bit and be like, you know what, you are too pronounced. Let's just, let's tone you down a bit. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back to the face and I'm gonna put in the mask part. So using black, I'm gonna work around my eye and I wanna leave a really thin white line around the eyeball. And that is going to serve us two ways. One, it can help us account for the eyelids that all eyes pretty much have. And it will help it so when we go to paint the eye, it's not bleeding into that section. That is my son talking. I think he gets uncomfortable in quiet spots. He yeah. likes hearing the voices. He's like, here, I'll, I'll, I'll say something. You guys take a break. I got this part. Now it's starting to look like a sloth, isn't it? Isn't that funny? Yes. How like, you're like, okay, yes, there we go. Now I kind of know what animal this is. Okay, now we're gonna let that dry for a second and move on to the nose. So we're on step three. I'm gonna switch to my round two. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of black paint just on the tip. The nostrils are gonna be completely black, so the actual holes themselves are gonna be black. And then the nose, this like uh, triangle, upside down triangle, that is gonna be dark also. Like so. I wonder if anyone's had a pet sloth. There's gotta be. I wonder what they're really like. I, I dream about it. Don't meet your heroes, kid. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, are you gonna be, 
I mean, they've got to be just amazing. Now I got to put my mouth line in. You can see here I only did half of my mouth when I was tracing, but that's okay. I'll just eyeball the other half. So there's a little smile and there's a little smile. There it is. Okay. And then the edge part is going to be black here and on this side. And there's going to be a little bit of a shadow underneath this mouth line. So I'm going to rinse my brush out and get it very, uh, like dry it on my paper towel so it's just damp. And then I'm going to blend my mouth line shadow out like so. And I'm going to start blending my nose. So I'm going to be pulling color from what I initially laid down. If you need to get more water, you can. Mine was getting too dry. And then you don't want to leave the rim of the nostrils totally white, but there are some highlights. So I'm just going to start kind of blending down and leaving just a couple of white highlights around the rim here and there but not a lot, because if it's too white, then it's gonna be, that highlight is gonna stick out so much and pop so much that there actually won't be form on your nose. It's gonna look like a little, uh, like a little piggy, actually. Pig sloth is a hybrid I could get behind. <laughs> I'm into that. Actually, the two-toed sloth kind of looks a little bit more like a pig than this one. Really? Yeah, they kind of have that piggy nose. You'll see. You'll see. I'll show you after. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there's my nose. I'm gonna leave that for a second. And I'm gonna work on my eyes. Now, I would like to say that because these eyes are so tiny, if you have like a black pen that you wanna use instead, like a micron pen, that might be easier. So I'll do one with a micron pen and one with a paintbrush. I'll do this left one with a micron pen. So I'm gonna shape the eye and then I have a couple highlights in here there's like two little round highlights and then there's going to be like a highlight along the outer left edge like so if you leave make these white chunks like the highlights too thick then it will be super hard to like then it will look like the whites of the eyes instead of a highlight. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, this other one I'm gonna use a paintbrush. So that was with a micron pen. Turned out pretty good. And this is with a paintbrush. Just gotta be patient. Eyes on animals are hard for me because I always it makes my animal have an emotion on their face, and mine just usually look either like dumbstruck or mad. <laughs> I think that's the magic with painting animals because 100% how you paint, like the eyes really is what's going to predict their emotion, and I, I almost enjoy seeing what... Like discovering it? Discovering, yeah. Because like I have learned how to like adjust it sometimes where I'm like, oh, that looks angry. I need to adjust that. But like sometimes they look serious, sometimes they look kind or happy. It's, it's just kind of bizarre and really funny. Okay, so here is with my paint. So you can't even tell the difference between the two. So if it's easier for you to use a little black pen for those black details, do it. Nothing wrong with that. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a second layer on the socket itself and I'm gonna bring in the white eyelid around the eye. It got too wide. And then right underneath, there's gonna be an extra shadow because our eye sockets don't have bone underneath them. So it's the same for when you're painting humans. Um, there's always like around the eye itself, a darker value because there's no bone underneath there making it stick out. And then I'm gonna do the other eye, just a second layer underneath it it's amazing without the chin hair shading how just chubby your new one looks really it just looks chubby <laughs> and that's okay all sloths are different from one another you know <laughs> some have a little extra love on them 
Okay, so I'm gonna take a break from that for a second and kind of pay attention to other areas of my painting. So I'm gonna kind of define that a little bit more. I'm gonna use my red. Okay, and for me, this is pretty yellow underneath the mouth. However, I feel like it almost matches the coloring on the belly, and so it doesn't feel too out of place for me. If there wasn't this yellow green on the belly, that would feel really random, and I would have to tone that down, probably using black since we don't have purple. But I just wanna say that like, if you, if things like this happen, but you have it in other parts of the animal or your painting, it feels like it belongs there still. So, um, and you can even play that up. So it's like, okay, I have some yellow going on here. Maybe I'm gonna grab a little bit more and introduce it to the arm a little bit. And this is gonna be like more of a creamier yellow colored sloth, which there, are, I mean, sloths come in different colors, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I just realized I said that and I didn't know. You know. The safe part of making claims like that is I'm sure we haven't discovered all the slots. <laughs> so you just claim whatever you want. Girlfriend. There we go. So I just did a little bit of yellow other places and now it's like a tan sloth. Voila, you know what I mean? Why was that? So I don't know. I just didn't even say that. It was so <laughs> okay. So we're gonna give our body and our face a break. We're gonna visually take a break from it and move on to our leaves and then we'll come back to it in the last step with finishing details or whatever we need to do. Um, so I'm gonna switch to my round six. I'm gonna grab my emerald green. I'm gonna mix it with some water. If I want my, my green to be like a darker browner green, I'm gonna mix in one of my browns. Okay. So I'm just going to start painting in leaves and I'm doing these nice and loose. I'm not like crazy rendering these out because I'm just going to blend all of this out anyway. Also if you have some blue, you can mix a little bit of blue in with your green to get a different kind of green. Should I show them? Definitely. Okay, blue doesn't come in this kit, but if you have blue paint, you can do this. So here's that green with a little bit of blue in it. So I kind of like to mix it up. So just keep kind of adding your leaves. You can do, I mean, I put some on the outline here. You can do more, you can do less. Maybe you don't want to do leaves, leaves, but like vines, it's totally up to you. And then if I want to do more blue green leaves, mix in some blue in there if you want. My favorite kind of leaves actually are more yellow leaves. I think they're more true to what you see in nature. Okay, and then just take, and then rinse your brush and seriously pull color and just kind of mess up all of this color. And if yours aren't blending out, like if you waited too long to blend out and they're just not moving and you're getting like the lightest wash, another trick that you can do is blend out with water and then grab some color and just like drop it in and do a little bit of wet on wet technique there. Also, I just wanna point it out, this reference photo was point, printed on my home computer. <laughs> so that's why it looks weird, just, just so you know. All right, let's be a little grunty today. So cute. It's a little grunt. Okay, 
I'm still just blending, blending, blending. Really, this part is messy. It's not super detailed. We're just giving them the hint that they're in a forest or the wild. <laughs> I just realized I don't really know where sloths lives. Where do they live? Yeah, probably definitely a forest. I mean, they're South American, if that's what you're asking. Okay. And you can have this go all the way to the edge of your paper. I kind of had mine like just kind of blend out and have like an uneven bottom. Okay, so we blended out my leaves. And if you want to go back in after it dries and define a few more leaves, you absolutely can. I'll do that in a minute. I'm going to go back to the body now. So basically, I'm just going to put in a little bit of color for these nails. I realize I haven't done those yet. So it's just a little hint of color right there. I'm going to darken some of the shadows. <laughs> Can you hear his cute little grunts? Yeah. Okay, we're almost done. really like this red brown I just mixed. So I'm kind of just going back over, um, re-darkening re some of my shadows or where they kind of lost a little bit of form. And then I'm gonna take my two, I think my eyes actually look really good. I'm gonna re-darken my nose a little bit. and my mouth. I'm just going to make the edge of the mouth like the, I kind of want to make it more smiley. So I'm just going to, there we go. There we go. Now he looks happier. Okay. Oh, his little face is so cute. And then now I'm just going to go in and redo some of these leaves. Again, you do not have to do this part. You could put them hanging off a farm tractor if you want. Yeah. Oh, that would be cute. Oh, it would be cute to kind of like put them in the city, you know, Juxt juxtaposition. Little sloth in the big city. Yeah. There's actually really cute on this fabric. He's hanging on like twigs with flowers and stuff, which is cute. You can add more than what's on the outline. This is your painting. You guys can do whatever you want. And I think that's, that's it. That's our cute little sloth. Elfine. Elfine. Uh, I can't wait to see what you guys have painted. Hopefully you have enjoyed this project. If you need any of these materials, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Uh, if you want to share your work, you can tag us on Instagram at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. Or we have a wonderful Facebook group that we created just so you guys can share the stuff that you're making. So you can find that on Facebook, and that is called Let's Make Art Watercolor. Um, I think that's all I got to say. So hopefully you guys enjoy this bonus project. Thank you so much for painting with me, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.